Hello YouTube. It is past midnight where I am. And I have neurochemistry class tomorrow morning. But I'm sitting here, nevertheless about to review a game. Because I've finished a game recently that has compelled me to make a review for it because I've enjoyed it quite a bit more than any other game I've finished in recent memory, and that game is Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor for the Nintendo DS. Okay, so uh, this is my first Shin Megami Tensei game. First in the series. I've wanted to get into it for a while, but uh, just never got around to it until I started going back and exploring some games for older systems that I've been procrastinating experiencing and uh, I'm aware this game came out in a uh, 3DS remake of sorts and uh, it was like a $10 difference between getting that and the DS version which I ended up picking up and both available new, actually, uh, even though it's 2017 and this game came out like about a decade ago, originally. And, um, I mean, there aren't a huge amount of differences between the two. As far as I know, the 3DS version just adds voice acting and extends the story a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I got the original because, to be honest, kind of have a little bit of a thing against remakes. Uh, I don't like the idea of games being repackaged, resold, with changes when they're just the original story and whatnot, and uh, also I discovered a lot of the voice actors for the 3DS version are anime voice actors who I've heard in quite a few different anime I've watched, so it was like... Uh, you know, I'd be hearing their voices if I played that game, that version, and probably think of a lot of different anime characters I'm already familiar with because of the voices, so... I liked just playing the game in its original form and uh, kind of imagining what voice each character would have, and uh, it did not hinder my enjoyment of the game in the slightest. So without further ado, I'll get into my review here. And uh, starting out with the story of Devil Survivor, um, to uh, go into how uh, the story is presented, it's kind of a visual novel narrative style. So you'll be going around to a lot of different places, talking to different NPCs, and not really exploring in like third person or first person perspective or anything like that you're just uh, going around and scrolling through a lot of text dialogue uh, between characters that's how all the um, plot related events in the game play out really and uh, basically you'll have discrete events split up into half an hour increments uh, spread out across the days you're given in this game and um, pretty much like uh, you can often explore a good deal of the events that pop up day to day but inevitably you'll come to events which you have to check out right when they come up or they will go away so you pretty much have to pick and choose, prioritize which events you're going to check out, what places you're going to explore, which people you want to talk to who are involved in the story of this game, and uh, you end up kind of making your own branching path through the story, and uh, it's pretty cool how it does that. Uh, so that's the narrative style. Um, to talk about characters a bit, which are, you know, that's another aspect of the story. 
there's a pretty vast array of NPC characters you come into contact in this game. And uh, they come from all backgrounds, all walks of life. Um, they have very interesting backstories. Lots of them have a lot of very interesting uh, little secrets and um, yeah, just bits of their past that you can sort of dig up throughout the game if you so choose to explore, you know, different characters. And I have to say, they're all pretty realistic. Uh, the way these characters act throughout this narrative um, is pretty believable. Like, I can believe and I can see what angle different characters are coming from when they say certain things or act certain ways. Uh, they're believable archetypes, I'll say that. So, uh, the characters are great, and um, there were just a lot of characters I really loved. Uh, one of my favorite characters ever, one of my favorite male characters ever in this game was Naoya. Naoya, who is this mysterious guy, uh, actually the cousin of your uh, character you play in this game. And he's just uh, shrouded in mystery and He's like this uh, genius programmer dude, and 24 years old, and he's just the coolest. He's just the coolest. Just such a cool character. Every time, every time I saw him, I just thought, oh, he is so cool. So that's Naoya, but uh, there were lots of really awesome characters in this game. Lots of interesting characters, lots of likable characters, a few that might be a little annoying. Maybe one or two that I wasn't very attached to, but uh, they weren't. I wasn't detached to them because they were bad characters. I was detached to them just because they were well made characters I didn't like. Big difference. Um, other things about the story, um, I guess I'll give just a general idea of what it's about. Um, it takes place in Tokyo, you know, modern day Tokyo, and uh, to put it simply, uh, the city is flooded, attacked by demons, and the city goes into lockdown, and you and your friends have to spend the game figuring out what the heck is going on, and trying to uh, mitigate and just uh, solve this disastrous situation, you know, the mystery of it, because uh, things aren't very clear, like why things are happening the way they are, uh, what is causing things. It's a mystery that unfolds in this game's plot, very much so a mystery. And uh, that makes it pretty compelling to keep playing, because you are always in the dark to some extent. Like, you're always moving through the story and things are happening, but you don't know why they're happening. And they're interesting and intriguing things, and they become even more so when you learn more about them later, you know, as you uh, keep unfolding the mysteries. And uh, it's kind of just a realistic way of presenting a story, because that's the way real life is, often. You know, uh, things happen in real life, and you typically don't know necessarily why they happen until later, and until you get more context, more enlightenment to certain situations. So, it was just a really great, just a really well-told story. And, uh, I also have to say, um, the dialogue throughout this game is extremely well written. Uh, the way characters are written is one of the things, I think, that makes the characters very good in this game. Uh, each character just has a lot of personality that shows through the writing, and, uh, 
Also, no grammar mistakes, like no typos or anything, like nothing weird about uh, the text you see, like, you know, there are some games which will have bad translations, things lost in translation, you know, it's a thing you see with JRPGs that have been translated from Japanese into English. And I've played games like that before where every other line will be like, huh, what? What was that line? What does that mean? Because it just reads weird because of bad translation, but there's no such issue with uh, Devil Survivor. All the text is remarkably well written. You know, it's not only just good in terms of grammar and good English, it's just good in terms of uh, dialogue quality. Uh, it's just good writing. So, the narrative in this game, the story, they're awesome. And, uh, all the time I was just thinking to myself just how cool the whole concept and premise of the game is. Um, because basically, yeah, I, I haven't even gone into really uh, the premise of the game, you know, what constitutes the gameplay. Basically, you're taking control of demons, like, kind of like you do Pokemon, you know, in the Pokemon games. It's very similar, and uh, only it's better, like, for adults, more oriented towards adults. And, uh, yeah, you take control of these demons, and you're basically using demons to fight demons, and occasionally some other people who uh, you may have conflicts with, that you come into contact throughout this game. And uh, the premise of it is just so neat, because it has these connections into programming and computer hardware, software, and, uh, I don't want to get too into it just because it would spoil things, and honestly it's just a little too convoluted to get into in a review, but, uh, it's a really well done premise to the game, and, uh, I just thought it was really awesome. So, with that, I will start to get into battle system, I believe, next. Okay. So, the uh, battle system of this game is very deep, uh, very customization friendly, much like the story is. Because, uh, you know, the story has not only branching paths you can go through based on what events you explore, but, like, different, uh, dialogue options. That's one thing I forgot to mention. In dialogue, you can, uh, pick and choose your responses to different characters, uh, that you talk to throughout this game, and you have a lot of free reign in, uh, how you, um, respond to them and which ideas or characters you choose to respond favorably or not favorably to. So there's just a lot of customization in that regard. And uh, back to what I was saying, Battle also has this kind of customization because there's this system of acquiring demons through uh, an auction, actually, and uh, it's a very well-made auction mechanic built into this. Uh, psychologically, the way other bidders will bid on demons in this auction is uh, very realistic. Like, you can sort of play with other people bidding for these demons, and uh, based on whether you're a, an aggressive or a conservative bidder, it'll change the way other people bid. And the thing that's uh, customizable about this system is that through this auction you can acquire what demons you want, whatever demons you want that are available to you, 
uh, at any point in the game, and you're basically amassing this collection of demons as you go on, and it's the same concept that exists in Pokemon that makes those games so great, where you have the freedom and ability to express yourself by picking your favorites, your team of monsters or demons in this case. That uh, you know that resonates with you, the ones that you like, the ones that uh, just really speak to you for whatever reason. And uh, besides that, there's also deep customization in uh, abilities that you give these demons. You can uh, teach them abilities. Your character can learn a lot of abilities. Uh, a lot of magic and attack skills uh, can be shared in common between your character and demons actually, which is pretty neat, pretty unique. And um, these abilities are just, uh, it's just a very deep, well thought out system. Uh, it has kind of uh, attributes to it, attributes that different magic spells have that can give you advantages or disadvantages against certain types of attacks or uh, demons. And uh, it's just like the type system in Pokemon, really. Um, only very much its own thing still. Uh, it definitely felt like its own system. It's not a ripoff of any other RPG battle system I've played. And. Uh, the neat thing about some of these abilities that your demons and both and also your character can learn sometimes are uh, these are things that can be used in battle and on the battlefield and I'll explain what I mean about this uh, so the battle system in this game is unique in that it's like it's kind of this blend of a first person turn-based close quarters battle interface with like this uh, tactical RPG battlefield and the turn based stuff happens in close quarters when you're, you're attacking one other enemy and you guys are right up close to each other clashing and those exchanges are pretty brief pretty dynamic pretty fast and they don't last very long, but uh, they're pretty action-packed, you know, pretty hard-hitting. Sometimes one battle is all it takes to knock out your opponents, or sometimes for your team to get knocked out, depending on uh, how prepared you are. And you have that, which happens in close quarters. When you're not doing that, though, you're on a grid-based battlefield, just like any tactical-style RPG. And, uh... Yeah. The blend of those two things is done flawlessly in this game, I think. It's just done really well. Battle was always interesting. Uh, you've got the best elements of both of those systems. You know, you have the, uh strategy of uh, positioning your characters on a grid based battlefield and maneuvering them around to strategic positions but also just uh, that good old turn based combat which is so successful in so many RPGs uh, turn based combat is pretty much the only combat I care about in video games honestly. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of open to the idea of action RPGs, but uh, generally I'm all into turn-based stuff, and it's done well in Devil Survivor. And uh, back to what I was saying about the abilities, like, uh, there are abilities that can aid your character in moving around the battlefield. Uh, they might give you extended movement or ability to like 
teleport through obstacles and things like that, and that was really neat. And then some of the abilities also have functions within battle, such as, uh, I don't know, just making your uh, team recover magic points or hit points or something like that, or giving them immunities to certain attacks. There's just all sorts of different effects in this game, and there are ample opportunities to uh, experiment with them and find out what works for you and what gets you through the battles, and uh, it's just a lot of fun to form your own strategy with that, and that just gets into more of that customization I was talking about. Um, Oh, uh, one other note I have to make about the demons. Demons in this game. Uh, besides bidding for these demons, you can fuse them. You can fuse demons together. And uh, I won't go too much into the mechanics of it or anything, but basically all you need to know is you can take two demons you have that you've won in an auction or whatever, and use them to create a brand new demon and uh, you can create a lot of really cool much more powerful demons doing that and it's something that uh, you'll rely on if you play this game to be able to survive the battles because uh, the difficulty increases constantly as you go through this game and you have to keep up or you will find yourself coming into some troublesome tight situations for sure. I know I did when I played through this game. And uh, anything else I can say about the demons? Uh, the demons have excellent personality. Uh, this is something you won't find in the Pokemon games. Um, Every time you win one in an auction, or fuse one for the first time, they'll have little uh, lines of dialogue that they'll have to say, which will be reflective of their own unique demon personality, and uh, there's a lot of very amusing content in those lines. Uh, yeah, just a lot of amusing demon dialogue little one-liners they say, some of it's a little bit risque at some points, and uh, yeah, it added even more to uh, this game's character overall. Okay, so that pretty much covers story and battle. I think the next thing I'll get into is uh, music already here. Yeah, music. So the soundtrack to Devil Survivor is something I'm very fond of. And I'm very fond of this soundtrack. Um, to just talk about the instrumentation, uh, it's a lot of electric guitar driven stuff. And you might think, because this is a DS game, that it isn't the best quality, but I think you'd be wrong in thinking that, because I actually thought the electric guitar you hear was very good. Uh, I used a good pair of earbuds when I played this game, and a pair with good bass, and uh, I got pretty good like sounding guitars through the tracks I thought you know I thought the guitars sounded pretty good overall for this being just like a little DS game the lead guitar especially I really liked uh, it just had a good tone to it a really good lead guitar tone kind of had that uh, warm sort of uh, just excellent um, kind of lead metal guitar uh, tone to it, and it was 
awesome to listen to because there are lots of cool lead guitar lines in these tracks. And uh, overall, you know, it was just a really, like a really well composed soundtrack. Um, I didn't get too tired of hearing any of the tracks. Even some of the battle themes that I heard very often were just really great. Uh, just really like um, things that I wanted, things that made me want to crank up the volume on my DS because I was really just uh, enjoying these uh, hard driving kind of guitar driven uh, battle themes. And uh, besides that type of music, there was also just a good number of atmospheric mood setting pieces that also relied heavily on guitar but uh, you know they have other little touches in there um, tasteful use of synthesizer here and there uh, it's always good to have some tasteful synths in any game soundtrack I believe so uh, yeah a very good soundtrack um, also a pretty cool opening song, uh, the song that plays when you boot up the game as an intro, that's very good as well. And it actually has vocals to it, uh, so that was pretty cool to hear. Very strong soundtrack, good music, I liked listening to, I'd like listening to it even if I wasn't playing the game. And moving on from music to the visuals, um... I've got to say, this is a terrifically detailed game in terms of the visuals. Uh, all you're seeing as you play this game and go from place to place, uh, you know, the only time you're seeing environments are when you're in the battles, really, on the battlefields, uh, those grid-based battlefields I mentioned. and. Uh, you're exploring these different areas of downtown Tokyo during this lockdown, and um, they're just excellently detailed, excellently rendered, realistic looking locations. Um, it was great to just look close at my little DS slate screen and uh, take in all the details of these uh, urban locations, because they're just... Um, really well made, uh, you know, lots of little details in terms of debris and areas that have been ransacked or devastated or, uh, you know, little fine details on buildings and cars and just uh, a lot of good looking environments and I have to make a special note also of water. Any time you see a place with water in this game, which there isn't much of, granted, uh, but there's like, you'll come across like a little pond here and there in one or two locations, and the water on the surface looks excellent. Like, uh, that really stood out to me when I saw it. It was striking how realistic the water looked, so uh, that was a cool little detail. Um, just the texture of it, the rippling, um, the color of it, uh, very realistic water, very realistic environments in general. Um, I can't speak highly enough about uh, the rendering of the environments. And uh, when it comes to uh, characters, uh, like the dialogue icons, they were great. Uh, like. Um, they're anime, anime icons essentially, uh, anime illustrations of each character that you get in the dialogue, visual, no visual novel style, and those all looked great. Each character has a number of different uh, sort of uh, animations, um, a number of different uh, icons for their uh, different motions that they respond with at various points in the dialogue and that was all very well done very expressive it just uh it looks like well-drawn 
manga really. Um, also, uh, I have to say, once you get into battle, uh, you see some of the best sprites that you can see in sprite-based games in this in this uh, game. It was uh, definitely some of the best sprite artwork, sprite animation I've seen. Just, uh, you know, just the characters just uh, standing in their default positions looked great, but also like demons that would appear on the battlefield looked awesome. Lots of detail in characters and demons alike. Uh, and they walk around on the little battlefield nicely and uh, yeah some of the uh, bosses especially have these big sprites that look awesome on the battlefield and uh, you'll see what I mean if you play through the game you'll get to see a few of those but uh, overall the visuals were just another uh, definite positive for this game and uh, honestly, I've got pretty much nothing but positives to say about it. I mean, um, the game really resonated with me, and uh, as I said at the start of this review, it's gave me, it's given me like enjoyment I haven't had from a video game in quite a while, like this much enjoyment from a game. Uh, it was just really addictive in the same way Pokemon was, and uh, it drew me in with that same feeling Pokemon gave me when I played it as a little kid, like when I was like 11 years old playing the first Pokemon games that came out. And it's that feeling again, but with a much more adult game that just uh, executes all the same types of elements that were in Pokemon pretty much with its own style of course it's very different in a lot of ways but uh, it executes that for adults and it does it so well just incredibly well it's like a dark story you know uh, you come across life and death in this story and um, I mean just to go back and uh, back into the st story stuff again, the s choices you make in this game they result in life and death, and it's serious stuff. Like um, your actions very much affect where the story goes, and uh, at the end, especially, you have a very large effect on what type of ending you get. I didn't mention this, but there are like, there's more than one ending you can get in this game. And uh, by the time you get to the end, due to your own choices of what you did throughout this journey, you'll have experienced different things than probably another person who played this game, and certain characters who another player might have allowed to live, you may not have allowed to live whether it's on purpose or not, whether you intended to or not, and uh, you're just constantly presented with choices in this game that test you. You're constantly being tested. Your values are being tested. Uh, what types of characters you like or don't like are being tested, is being tested. Uh, it's just a game that tests you. Um, you have to make choices. You're presented with choices in desperate situations in this sort of survival scenario in this lockdown with these demons everywhere and desperate people all over the place and uh, things unfold as they would really uh, realistically as they would if such a disaster played out in the real world I think I really feel that way and um, yeah, all your actions just have weight to them, and it's just pretty cool that you have that power in your actions in this game. Uh, it's another level of customization, and uh, 
it affects not only like characters living and dying, but it affects which characters join you, your party, throughout the game. And it's not obvious at all when you're playing through this game who is going to join your party at what time, or if they will at all. And uh, I was genuinely surprised at different points by uh, characters who became a part of my party or left my party. I didn't see these things coming. It was nothing that felt mandatory or uh, premeditated by the game's plot. It felt like it was controlled entirely by my actions and what I chose to do. And uh, it's just, it just adds to the immersion and the realistic experience of playing an RPG and that's what you want in a role-playing game. You want your decisions to have that kind of effect and to have that uh, type of that type of power to shape your experience you know in a unique way so that each person will experience the game totally differently. And this game does that to tremendously good effect. Um, so, is there anything else I need to talk about with Devil Survivor? Um, not too much else here. I guess I'll make a note on um, playtime. I probably played. Uh, it's hard to know since this game doesn't actually have an endgame clock, unfortunately. But I would easily estimate that I spent a good 100 hours playing this game, this little DS game. If not more than that, because I just had so many nights where I wanted to keep on playing and I would play for like four or five hours straight till three in the morning or whatever because I always wanted to unfold the next mystery of the plot or um you know try to be able to fuse the next cool demon that I wanted to acquire because there were so many really cool demons in this game that you're introduced to. And, uh, yeah, I just poured in time to this game. I just kept pouring it in, and it never got old or stale. It was just, just a constant addiction until I played it all the way to the end. And I did, you know, I played it all summer long. It was kind of like my summer, main summer game this summer. I did have to take a little break for a few weeks to study for the GRE, but, uh, yeah, I finished it just a couple nights ago, and the game also has a very good ending, um, or at least I liked the ending that I got, uh, I can't speak to every ending since I don't know, honestly, what every ending is, or even how many endings there are, uh, I know there's definitely at least more, uh, there's at least one ending besides the one I got, so there's at least two, probably more, but, uh, it was just a, a badass ending, I'll put it that way, uh, <laughs> but after the credits rolled, um, the last words the game left me with, they actually gave me chills because they resonated with me in a very fundamental way I relate to. And uh, part of it just has to do with the theme of survival, because, uh, you know, besides unraveling the mysteries in this game, and besides your character, you know, eventually getting involved in things beyond... Uh, just plain survival. Uh, survival really is what this game is about, and it very much stresses the priority of survival and just getting through things alive. 
And there's something uh, very potent and powerful about that message, as simple and simplistic as it may, you know, as simplistic as it may seem. There's something very powerful about it, and you may just have to play it to find out exactly how it, that can be powerful. So it's not something that comes across necessarily when someone just says something like that. But uh, yeah. Devil Survivor is a very apt name. Definitely a very apt name. And I have to say, this was just a phenomenal, fabulous, fantastic game that um, did an excellent job of bringing together the fantastical and reality in just this brilliant clash and uh, the ensuing havoc was uh, quite amusing, entertaining, and engrossing to experience and witness firsthand. So, uh, I guess all I want to say is I recommend Devil Survivor to an extreme degree. It is an excellent game, and I would recommend anybody and everybody plays it. My first Shin Megami Tensei game, and I can't praise it enough. So, peace out, YouTube.